now I, I don't actually look at the names of the elements yet. So this one, you know, I can see concrete rectangular column to, you know, it's a fairly descriptive name. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a bit of funny formatting, you know, it's got some hyphens and it's got a colon, then I'm assuming this is millimeters, then it's got this random number next to it. It's not random, it's the Revit element ID, mm -hmm. but, but to an outsider, it is random and it shouldn't be there. But more importantly than these names, I am actually going to look at the types. So Revit users will think of this as uh, a families, types versus instances. So types versus instances, uh, I see it's no different. Whenever you browse an IFC model and you're only looking at instances, you're doing yourself a disservice because most of the juicy information is actually type-based. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that's where you get the list of all this, all the columns you have on your project. You know, what are all types of columns I'm going to build? Because that's how they cost. Of course, we talked about classes and how, you know, these things are kind of generic things, which are not good enough. These are the, the type names. And it says a column, hop, hop, 100, 110. Okay, great. And there's a few things which jump out at me. Firstly, this name is not quite right. In a drawing, what do you... What's the short name? Remember, there's always two names. What's the, we'll start with the short name. What's the short name you label that column type in your drawing? So and we should have there the name that we would use in a drawing. Correct, right? After all, we're producing drawings from BIM models, I hope. Yeah, I hope we won't produce any drawings <laughs> anymore and just use the model. <laughs> That's right. And therefore, I mean, if you had it in your drawing, you'd, yeah. you'd have it in your BIM model, right? Mm -hmm. So... I mean, you had it for a reason. There was a reason you were tagging these things. And so if you have a structural drawing, you'd say a column might be labeled C1, right? And then another type of column might be labeled C2. So you have a whole bunch of square columns <coughs> called C1, 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 C1. Then another type of column called C2, 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 C2. Mm -hmm. And they tag that. You see it in a drawing that says C1 and C2. And that's what I should see here. I should not be seeing hop 100, 110. I should be seeing C1 or C2. And I, and I don't have the drawing, so I don't know what would be the correct thing to see. Uh, but this thing here, uh, you know, as a human, I can understand it, right? I can understand that this is 100 by 100 SHS and it's got 10, you know, it's a, it's a 10 mil thick. I can make those guesses mm -hmm. after I visually see it, of course. If I ever had to correlate it to documentation, it's not sufficient. And we're dealing with columns here. Like maybe it's less important for columns. But if you think about the hundreds of fixtures, sanitary items, equipment, you don't read out the full name of each one of those. You say it's, you know, it's a, it's a wall type W1. It's a window you know, door type DT01 or whatever. You, that's mm -hmm. that short code. It's what you should be seeing here. Same. If this was an architecture model, I would expect door type DT01, window type. WT01 or whatever the coding name system is you use, that should be there and it should reflect your documentation. I should be able to have the door schedule, the column schedule, the window schedule, the uh, whatever, the, the, the list of uh, pumps that you're using, a list of valve sizes that you have to procure on one side and look at your BIM model next to it and it should correlate 100%. So this naming is 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 definitely pretty suspicious. Like this, this might be a descriptive name, for example, I, I would use that as the long name. Uh, it's not written very well. I mean, it's, you know, it's got a weird colon in there. It says hop twice and clearly someone hasn't written it. It's just been generated. It hasn't yeah. been care around this data. Exactly. But should we have a field there with the description, you mean? Yes, definitely. So what I should be seeing here is oh, I yeah. should copy and paste that into here. We'll call that C1. C1 and I, yeah. you know, I, I don't know what a hop is, but okay. Mm -hmm. If that's sufficient, then that's what I should see. That's a good example, yeah. Right now, I'm only looking at names and descriptions. Even though it's so simple, you can get so far with it. Mm -hmm. And another thing which is really suspicious here is there's a lot of hops. There's a lot, a lot of hops. And if I just filter out the column types, and I selected all that, there's 61 types of columns in this project. And if I just, you know, just glance at it, I don't think there's 61 types of columns used here. No, I agree. It's much less. This may, I don't know, three, four, five, maybe five types of columns. You, when you here. say type, uh, like profile section, right? Different section, not uh, length, for example. They might have a different length or. Correct. But type depends on the, the discipline. You know, how does a structural engineer define a type? He defines it by mm -hmm. its profile. 
typically. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, an architect might define a type uh, differently for doors compared to walls, right? Walls, mm -hmm. they, any doesn't matter how long the walls are, high, how, how high the wall is, if it's the same layered buildup, that's the same wall type, according to an architect. But mm -hmm. here we're looking at the structural model. So from a structural perspective, the cross-sectional types should be, well, there should be only a handful. 60 is, is definitely not right. And we can test that. We can select one of these, and I can see the, the this is the type, the construction type, and I can press this button, which will select all of that type. And you know, it selected only six, and that's that's not true because the one above it is, in this case, mm -hmm. also 100, 110. Like the description is the same, but the the type is they they separate into two type objects. That's not cool. <laughs> it's not necessary, let's say. Yeah. Well, it, it's also a pain, right? If you wanted to, if you wanted to do any sort of scheduling, a very common way of grouping your scheduling is by type, yeah. right? If you want to cost things or, or generate work schedules or or you yeah. just or even visualization, right? You want to yeah. select all of the same type, and you yeah. can't do that anymore because the data is a mess. Yeah. Well, so. I don't think this is a mistake. I just think that there has. Been uh, no time dedicated for this purpose because I assume there is no so detailed uh, requirement on our project. This is another one of my responsibilities and uh, one of my tasks to make better requirements to avoid or uh, to make sure that we get this kind of uh, details on our projects uh, later on. But uh, yeah, like I said, I don't think this, uh, I, I'm not sure, uh, no, 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 I'm sure that this does not have to do with. Uh, the fact that uh, people uh, don't know how to do it or so on is just they did not pay any attention to this, towards this. That's absolutely right. People are not paying enough attention to this. I mean, I mean, forget IC for a moment. Just when somebody does BIM, if, if you, all right, let's say they're a Revit user and you open up their Revit model and you see 60 types of columns, you mm -hmm. know, that, 60 families, 60 Revit types. And, and let's say the project was being handed over and you've got to use their Revit model after that. You'd, you'd go, whoa, and you, you'd, you'd, you'd mark the, the red flag. You'd, you'd say this is a project risk, and so you have to clean it up to be productive. And that's because people working in a Revit environment understand they have a responsibility to maintaining a clean set of data in their Revit model. Unfortunately, as you can see, we don't yet have the discipline to do it in IFC. Yeah, without is... being a requirement. Yes, everybody has the same. Like we are filling the time with stuff we do anyway, right? But as long as it won't be a requirement or a priority, it won't happen. This is just a fact. Yeah, it's a shame because somebody writes down, I want you to do BIM in a contract. And it's kind of this unwritten requirement that we expect them to do mm -hmm. basic things like name things, right? Model walls and walls. Like if you said, I want you to do BIM mm -hmm. and somebody modeled it in SketchUp, imported that that uh, SketchUp model into Revit and then saved it as an RVT file and then gave that to you. I mean, you'd say you didn't do BIM because like if, if you were expecting a Revit model, you'd say, this is not a Revit model, right? <laughs> mm. Uh, similarly, if somebody says, I want you to do BIM, and therefore we expect an open BIM model, an, an IFC, and you open it and you get this, it's a bit of a shame that we have to spell it out that, yes, BIM mean, actually does mean calling your walls walls and, and naming your objects, what yeah. you named them in your documentation. Yeah. Well, I think uh, we are just in the beginning, right? And I think this will get better uh, after all. Definitely. But uh, it will take it some will time, but yeah, it will become better by nature. Yeah. So the solution here is to take all of these and, and merge them into a single column, whatever they've documented it as. And, mm -hmm. and what's also interesting here is that, and here's a little Revit specific trick. You can see it has an attribute called tag. And this is where it stores the Revit element ID. And that's kind of like the, the, well, it's the ID that Revit uses. And if I click on each one of these, they're all different IFC IDs, but you'll notice that the Revit tag remains the same. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that this was actually not intentional. The author in Revit only saw one column. He didn't expect it to explode out from one to, uh, I don't know how many we got here, uh, however many this is. Mm -hmm. 10, 15. He didn't expect it to generate 15. Revit did that without him knowing. And oh. nobody used an IFC viewer that checked types, not just instances, but the actual types to, to notice this mistake. So it was not anybody's fault. If, well, actually, it is. It's not a very good export out of Revit. It's, it's, it's 
unexpected when you only have one object and it multiplies out to 15 objects when you export. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a bug in Revit. Uh, it's also described on this page. It's called the, the Revit type duplication bug. There is an issue in Revit where if you take an object and for example, you mirror it, it's still one type in Revit, but it will duplicate to two types or you know, four types if you mirror it along multiple mm -hmm. axes mm -hmm. to create multiple objects, even though you didn't mean to. Mm -hmm. And this is this is Revit being conservative because if you take a table, an asymmetrical table, and you mirror it, there is a possibility that it's actually not the same type, right? You you actually procure a different product from the manufacturer because it's mm -hmm. asymmetrical. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends on the thing. So Revit's trying to be conservative, I guess, and say that yes, this symmetrical, this completely symmetrical column, you've mirrored it. Oh, maybe it's not quite the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Again, uh, this leads to the file size issue as well. It doubles, triples, quadruples. In this case, we're getting 15 times the file size yeah. just for this column. There is actually a quick little fix for this. There is this um, little, again, the quality control panel. We're going to see a lot of this panel today. There is this uh, patch panel, which you choose the merge duplicate types by tag option. And uh, if you select this, and I've already done it here, this, this patch model, and you just press that and you wait a little bit, it will do its best to merge these duplicate types. It can't do a perfect job because it is a bit of a complex operation. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, any any coders watching this, if they want to help see if they can do a better job, please, please do. It's all open source. It makes an attempt to merge these. And hopefully after we do that, we'll see uh, uh, less than 60, was it 60 something columns we saw. So it's done. Let's just load in that patched version and we'll see what we get. So again, this time I'm going to be lazy and I'm just going to filter out any any proxies. Okay, here we are. So this column, if we select by the same type, you can see all of these have the same type. Interestingly, a few of these do not, and we can just confirm that. So the one at the bottom is a HUP 150, 110. The one at the top is 100, 110. Great. So, so it, it, it's done it correctly. So all of these have the same type. And in our list of types, you can, there you go. See, now that's all our columns have now been reduced to. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight types of columns, mm -hmm. which is much, much, and this is exactly <laughs> what you expect to see, right? You, you look at this and it, and it starts to look a bit it more. It makes sense. Oh. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's starting to read. It would, it would read even better if it was C1, C2, C3, or you know, mm -hmm. whatever the codes are. Um, and then the descriptions read, this but properly spelled out without the duplicate information but it's it's a step step in the right direction that's true um, 